Hey guys, first up, if you don't know who Man vs Machine are, you have to go check them out. They're absolutely killing the motion graphics game. They've done some incredible work for brands like Nike, Xbox, and Squarespace, but it was actually their rebrand for Film 4 that first caught my attention. They created these amazing clips where we exit the scene from the bottom and then reappear in the exact same scene from above. There's even a breakdown video of how the whole production came together and it's truly impressive. Now, Man vs Machine created these clips with live action footage, but that got me thinking, could we pull off a similar result using still photography? Let's jump in and see how we go. All right guys, let's get straight into this one. All right, I'm just gonna frame up my perspective view a little bit here, and then we'll drop a camera into our scene. Let's look through our camera here, and we wanna come up to our Cinema 4D tags and add a camera calibrator. Great, so in the camera calibrator, we've got this image field, and this is where we're gonna drop in an image that we're gonna try and recreate. So I've got this great shot of a hallway here that's got some really nice perspective. We've got that nice back wall. It's got some really nice perspective and some nice depth in this photo. I picked this photo up from PX here. It's a great website to download some free images to start having a play with and doing this sort of stuff. So I'll pop a link down below and you can work along with us using this exact image. What I'm gonna do is drop a plane into my scene. And what I wanna do is try and reposition my scene so this plane resembles the position of the floor in the image. So while we're looking through our camera, with the camera calibrator tag selected, we'll actually be able to see, we'll actually be able to see the image, but it's gonna make it more difficult to see our plane. So with the tag selected, I'm just rotating around my scene here, trying to reposition my view so that plane looks like it's representing the floor. We might just need to scale our plane down a little bit, and to do that, we'll need, we'll need to click off that camera calibrator tag, and this is looking better. So with the tag selected, let's come over to our calibrate tab and we're gonna click create camera mapping tag and create background object. And this is gonna do two things for us, create a background object with that texture on it, but it's also gonna apply a texture to our camera. So now we can see our plane easier. We can just scale this down a little bit. We might need to rotate our camera just a little bit more. But now that we've got this in a position that we're a bit happy with, let's take it a step further. So let's group our null by holding Alt G. And what I'm gonna do is copy that texture tag from our camera and apply that to our null. And what this is gonna do is feed that texture tag to all the objects within the null. Great, so we've got our plane here and that's now got that texture as well. So I'm just gonna pull my plane down a little bit. So in my plane, I'm gonna make sure it's only got one width and height segment. Then I'll hit C to make it editable. And now with my edge select, I can individually select these edges and pull them back to the edge of the floor here. I'll turn that background object off for a moment so you can see exactly what this plane is capturing. We're just picking up a little bit of those walls in the corner there. And what I'm thinking, we might just rotate our camera a little bit so we don't have to shift our plane. So with our camera selected, let's just rotate that around a little bit so we're projecting that texture more accurately back onto our plane. And you can see we're gonna to need to reposition that back point to slide it back to where it meets the wall. And great, now that we're happy with our camera position and how it's projecting this image, let's add a projection tag onto it just so we don't move around in our scene or, or disrupt that projection. So what we're gonna do is use this plane to start building up the geometry for the rest of the scene. So while we're in the edge mode, I'm gonna hit KL and that's gonna bring up our knife tool. And what I'm gonna do is make two cuts on this plane where our two walls end. Finding that base point, making a cut, then I'll come and find the other base point on the left hand side and do the same. Let's jump out of our camera for a second so you can see what we've done here. We've now on this plane added these three extra cuts and we're gonna use these to start building out the extended parts of the floor. So let's jump back into our camera. I'm gonna select those two edges on the right side only. I'll then hit D for extrude and I'm gonna give this a zero offset and then hit apply. We can then pull this along Y and you can see this is now gonna start and this is gonna start forming the extended parts of that floor. Let's come and grab that edge now on the left hand side, hit D for extrude, give it that zero offset, and we'll pull that along as well. And great, we've now got what's gonna be our entire floor. So let's grab these three back points now, give it a zero offset, and now I'm gonna pull these up, and what this is gonna be is that back wall where that blue door is. All right, nice, this is starting to look good. 
what I'm thinking now, let's build up those walls in the foreground. So let's grab all those edges, jump back into our camera. Let's turn our background back on so we can see how high we need to pull these edges. Let's hit D for extrude, give it that zero offset, and then let's pull these up. We'll turn our background off again, just so you can see exactly what's happening on our plane. And what we want it to look like is that the camera is in the hallway. So let's grab all the edges closest to the camera and we're gonna pull these back and we're gonna pull these back so they capture that entire image. Pull it a little bit further, we're not quite there on the left side. And great, now that camera is within the geometry. All right, next thing, let's close off the roof of this little corridor we're in. So let's grab our polygon pen. And what I'm gonna do is just work along each point before returning back to that original point. And great, that's gonna create a new polygon for us there. And now our roof in our corridor is complete. All right, great, we've now got some geometry built up. But as I start to spin around this scene, you can see that the back wall is capturing our foreground walls as its texture. And that's not quite what we want it to do. We want this to, we want to be able to move around this scene and we want to be able to see beyond what the photo can see. We want this to look like a complete back wall. So what I'll do is grab our polygon select, grab those three polygons that are the back wall, and then I'm gonna hit right click and come down to split. And what that's now done is split off those three polygons into its own geometry. And then we can just delete that from our original plane. Let's rename our new geometry the back wall. And what we need to do now is texture this one a little bit differently. So that texture that we've applied to the null, let's grab that and copy that to the back wall. So in our material panel, let's make a copy of that texture. And I'm gonna load in a new image. Now this image has that extended back wall. We've got the complete door. You can see even the floor has been extended. Now I've set this up in Photoshop. If you guys would like a tutorial on how to start to set up these images and break them down, let us know and we'll jump into something like that. We're gonna apply this to the back wall and override that other texture. And great, now we've got that entire back wall. We can look through our corridor and see our complete door. We're not picking up any of those foreground walls. So we're gonna grab the edges of our back wall and just pull them up so while we're looking through this camera, we can see all the geometry. Nice, now that we're happy with the back wall, what I'm thinking, let's do the same thing to our floor here. So let's grab the extra polygons we made when we extended the floor. So let's grab the extra polygons here and let's split them off the same way and we'll delete them from our original plane. We can rename this and this is now our ground. Let's copy that texture from our null to that ground and we can just override that with our new texture that we applied to the wall as well. And perfect, we've now got that extended floor and this is starting to look cool. Let's jump back into our main camera here and while we're looking through this camera, let's add another camera into our scene and we'll look through that. And now when I dolly through the hallway here, we actually get that perspective as if we're actually traveling through the hallway. Now, as I've done this, I can actually see that I'm picking up a bit of that back wall on our corner of our wall here. So what I'll do is grab that edge and I'm just gonna pull that over a little bit. I might even do the same on the left-hand side, just so we're not capturing any of that wall. And I'm really happy with this. You can see we're moving through the hallway and we're getting this great perspective and we've really brought this photo to life. All right, now comes the fun part of how do we make it look like we're traveling between a couple of separate scenes. What I'm gonna do is also just grab those, I'm gonna grab those couple of edges that are also exposed. And I'm gonna extrude these to the same height that our back wall's at. So I'll jump into our four views. And I'm just gonna pull these up to it's, until it's about visually where the back wall is. Great, we're probably gonna reposition these a little bit later, but for now, keeping them even makes it a bit easier. What I'm gonna do is just add a new texture into our scene. I'm just gonna make this black for now and apply that to our null as well. I'll make sure our original texture is on top of that. And what this is gonna do for us is just apply that black material to where our image isn't projecting. All right, what I'm gonna do is come to our front here. I'm gonna grab our top edge and I'm gonna extrude it 20 points. 
Let's come to the base and we'll do the exact same thing. And I'll show you why we've done that in just a moment. All right, great. Now that we're happy with all our geometry, let's remove that protection tag from our camera, delete our background object, and great. Now we're left with our null with all that geometry and our camera that's projecting our image onto it all. So with all that selected, let's Alt G and group that. And this is now our first level. I'm gonna copy and paste that into my scene again and rename that level two. Now I'm gonna hold down shift so I know exactly how many units I need to move this down. And it was 440 centimeters. And now we get this nice intersecting between those two extra panels we made on the top and bottom. You can see as I move around here that that back wall and that side wall is actually intersecting into the level above. So we're gonna to need to grab those edges on our plane and also those top edges on our back wall. I'm gonna pull these down just so they're not intersecting. We might need to grab these back edges separately and just pull them up a little bit. And nice, I'm happy with that. Now, because we're happy with how the back walls are on our second level, I'm gonna move that back up 440 because we know that's our start position. I'm then gonna delete our level one and I'll make a copy of level two. And this is gonna be our new level one. Now, just as we did before, we know we need to move this down 440 centimeters, so let's do that. And great, now we've got our two levels complete. So the trick to this is we wanna transition between these two cameras seamlessly. Now, before we do that, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make another copy of my level two. This is gonna be level three, and let's pull this up 440 centimeters as well. And what this is gonna do is just make sure that all the shadows are correct in level two, just as they are in level one. Now the cameras we wanna be transitioning between are level two and level one. So what I'm gonna do is jump into our level two null and make a copy of that camera. We can then delete that tag and that texture off the camera. Now at frame zero, I'm gonna add a keyframe on my camera. And the great thing with this is we know that we move that other camera down exactly 440 centimeters. So let's come forward 90 frames, pull that camera down 440 centimeters and add another keyframe. Let's jump in and have a look. And great, we've now got this looping animation between these two levels and this is, and we're getting pretty close to that final look. Now what I like to do is just change my keyframes to linear and this is gonna to help to make this loop seamless. Now the really cool thing with this is, because we're using a photo, because we're using a photo, if we're already happy with how the photo looks, we don't actually need to really crank up our render settings. We can get away with really simple stuff to, to get some fast results that still look really cool. All right, great, we've built up our scenes, we've got our camera animating, we've got this nice perspective from the photo. What we're gonna do now is add an object into this scene and it's gonna help sell that whole depth. So I picked up this model from Flying Architecture. I'll pop a link down below if you wanna grab this exact same one. I'm gonna make a copy of this and I'll drop it back into our scene with our levels. I'm gonna scale that down so it looks about right for our scene. Holding down Shift to scale down at increments of 10. What I'm thinking, we'll rotate this a little bit and put it on a bit of a tilt just to give it a bit of interest. Now all these cameras are just getting in the way of our viewport a bit, so I'm just gonna go through our entire scene and just hit those traffic lights and turn them off. There we go, that's better. So with our chair selected, I'm just gonna reposition this so we've got two legs on the ground and, and it's leaning against the wall on the right-hand side there. Once we're happy with this position, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna make a copy of it and we need to get this into our bottom level as well. So let's move it down 440 units. Perfect, we've got these two identical levels and when I hit play, we get this nice seamless loop passing between the two different levels and what the chair helps or any objects within the scene it just helps sell that depth and what we've ultimately been able to do is give this image a whole heap more life and, and really give it some nice depth. So I wanna show you with some real basic render settings, we can get something looking pretty good. So I'm gonna swap over into the physical renderer and just add a default ambient occlusion and global illumination. 
Now our chairs already had this texture tag applied, so I'm just gonna select all them and delete. We can then group our chairs into another null, and this is gonna be our chairs null. Now that black texture that we've applied to the walls, let's make a copy of that. And I'm just gonna add a bit more reflectance. So let's, let's add a Beckman and we're gonna apply a Fresnel to give it a bit of fall off. We'll turn down that reflectance layer a little bit. Let's hit render and see what we've got. So you can see our scene's thinking about it. And as it comes through, we've now got these nice reflections on this chair and that ambient occlusion helps us have some nice contact shadows where this chair meets the wall. Now what would be really cool is if we can get some reflections of that chair into the ground as well. So what I'm gonna do with our original plane selected, I'm gonna use my polygon select tool and select all the planes on our ground here. Now just like before, we're gonna split these off. We're gonna split these off and then we can delete them from that original layer. And now we've been able to separate that ground layer. I'm gonna copy both the black texture as well as that texture from the camera from our null to that new ground layer. Let's make a copy of that projection tag. And this time, rather than swapping out the image, we're just gonna add some reflection. So let's turn on our reflectance layer, add a Beckman, give it some Fresnel, and we'll just turn it down to about 50%. Now let's apply that texture so it overrides the one on the ground. We'll also grab that black texture that we gave some reflection to for the chair, and we'll apply that to our ground as well. And now when I hit render, it thinks about it for a second, and then we get some nice reflection of our chair within the ground. And what I like to do is just scrub through my timeline, and let's have a look at where this texture ends and our black texture becomes more dominant. Our global illumination's thinking about it, and now you can see as it starts to reveal itself, we've actually got a lot of blur from that black texture. And we actually don't want any blur in our floor. So what I'm gonna do is copy that texture that we applied some blur to, and I'm just gonna turn it down. Now let's apply that back onto our ground so it overrides that other black texture. We'll hit render and have another look. And perfect, now that the way this works, and we've now got this nice seamless transition between that texture from our camera and that black material that we've applied underneath. And our whole scene's starting to look pretty cool here and it's rendering each frame pretty quickly. And the great thing with these scenes is we could actually get away with not using any global illumination because we're just re-rendering the image. And if we keep the integrity of the original photo, it actually still looks great. Now, because we gave some reflections to our floor, rather than trying to reapply this to our base level, I'm just gonna copy our level two, rename it level one, get rid of that, get rid of that other layer. And now we can just pull this down 440 units and now we've been able to set up that transition between level one and two and we've got some nice reflection in the floor of each. So this is how I started to build up these scenes and they're actually a lot of fun to play with. Now I wanna show you another scene that took a little bit more thinking and we had to think about the background and the foreground with a few extra objects. So let's jump into that and I'll show you what we ended up with. So this is another scene I prepared when playing around with this technique. This was another image I found off PX here and I thought, this is great. I can already see some ways to start to bring this alive. Now if I hit play, we get this nice animation dropping between these two platforms at a train station. And what I loved about it is we've got some nice objects in the foreground here. We've got the bin, the chair, and we've even got the framing on the roof which has the sign. Now, as well as that, we've got the platform in the front, We've got the train with a little bit of movement and we've also got the roof in the background. Now with something like this, you really have to break down your image. You can see we've got all these texture tags which have different portions of the image necessary so when we move the camera, we actually don't see any of the orig that original image projected back onto the objects. For example, in the original photo, the bin, is, the bin is clearly in front of the train. So what we need to do is go into Photoshop, paint back in portions of the train so our bin doesn't exist and then we can apply that to our train geometry. Now these scenes are a lot of fun to set up and I encourage you to jump in so I have a bit of a play. You can see when I move around this scene, we get some nice depth, some real simple modeling techniques, but we can pull off some really cool looks. So this was a lot of fun, pulling these images apart and really trying to bring them alive. And it's something that I wanna keep exploring and I hope, and hopefully it's something that interests you guys as well. All right, I'll see you guys again soon. Cheers.